guys, this is Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. Well, I fell into an upcycle rabbit hole. I needed to find a little medicine cabinet, but I couldn't find one online that was the dimensions that I needed. So in my search for the last project, I found a drawer from a cabinet that we dismantled when we bought the house. Today's project <laughs> brought to you by rabbits and the holes that they burrow. It has nothing to do with books. This is just a Nick the Booksmith sidebar, but I needed a cabinet. It actually turned out okay, and I thought you might enjoy the process. Watching, I will speed it up and, and put in the good parts. It'll look a lot easier than it really was. So without further ado, I give you the rabbit hole medicine cabinet. Thank you. 
finally, here is my medicine cabinet. It took me longer than anticipated due to wild, weird weather going on and not feeling well and a whole bunch of stuff. You know, you know how it goes. But I did finally get it finished and I will have to get some hardware to hang it with because I do not have any hardware at the moment. And for something like a medicine cabinet where the door opens and you have to you have to kind of use some force because it's got the little magnet. You don't want it on the wall just on little hanging on little nails or something. I want something where it kind of locks in. I'll have to get some next time I'm out and about to be continued on that. It will get installed later. And as I was finishing up the cabinet, I was thinking what I wanted to do with it because there's so many options. It, I could have stenciled on it. I could have put an inset of wallpaper or decoupage, scrapbook paper, anything in this little inset. But I decided that I didn't want that. <laughs> I wanted to go very almost utilitarian, very simple. Maybe like something you would have seen in a doctor's office or a pharmacy 75 years ago. I wanted to go very, very simple. So the only fancy part is this little decorative railing down here on this bottom shelf. Well, and the little knob. I guess the knob is kind of cute. It's just a little glass cabinet pull, but nothing, nothing fancy. So I ended up on the inside. Good sound effect. So I ended up putting this little magnetic catch here just because I didn't want the door gaping open. These are not attached, this one and this one. So I have to decide whether or not I want to attach these permanently or not. I probably will because if there's going to be little bottles or little jars of things or anything on the little shelves. I really, really want them to be secure, I'm thinking. Let me take out these shelves. I'm, af I'm afraid they're gonna fall out. So anyway, I just printed out some of the chemist labels I have as a digi kit, and I just kind of pasted them in there just, I don't know, for something a little bit different. I thought about putting a mirror, and I made one kind of like an old spotted mirror look. It's from the Krylon Looking Glass, and it doesn't make a perfect mirror. It's a very vintagey, kind of a grungy looking mirror. And, I, and you can spray it on just regular glass and it'll turn it into that kind of a mirror, like mercury glass almost. So it fits actually in between the shelves. So anyway, this is my little project. The area that I needed the little cabinet in is a very small, narrow section of wall, and it couldn't be very big. So when I was in the attic hunting around for supplies for my last project, which was the, the little bookcase for hiding the modem and the router, I came across this drawer, and the drawer was from one of the kitchen cabinets when we bought the house, the house didn't have a dishwasher. So when we got a dishwasher, we had to eliminate one of those base cabinets. And so there was, I think there's actually two drawers because I think there was two side by side and then like open hingy doors below them. I thought, well, half the work's already done. I was wrong, like hugely, hugely, hugely wrong. <laughs> because even though the the rectangle is built and it has a back on it. Most of them are not going to be square after being used for 75 years. You have to jimmy rig all kinds of things to get to actually fit together and work. That was probably harder than just going ahead and building the base initially. <laughs> but that's what happened. That's what I did. And if you find a drawer, they do make really cute cabinets. <laughs> I've also seen them as hung on the wall, like little niches that you could like shadow box type things. Um, I've seen them connected together. I hadn't seen any medicine cabinets made from them. I'm sure there are lots out there. I just haven't seen them. And I wish I had because maybe, maybe somebody else's process would have, would have helped me along the way too. So that's what I'm hoping that this little video will do for you if you decide to take a drawer 
and turn it into a cabinet of some sort. Just know what you're getting into. <laughs> Make sure it's square before you start. I didn't do that. The color that I ended up painting this is kind of a, it's a mix. So I used the Waverly chalk paint in mineral. There we go. In mineral. And then I also used the folk art very vanilla and this is also chalk paint and I just mixed them until I found a color and then it's it's not even that color completely because then I brushed over it with some of the darker mineral just barely whitened up with the very vanilla to make it a little bit darker of a color to kind of dingy up it's it's really hard to see on camera but in person you can see that it it has dingier areas around around the edges and i also sanded some of the paint off to reveal some of the chipboard underneath this was actually matte board it wasn't even chip, well i guess matte board is chipboard textured colored chipboard <laughs> most everything is chipboard the only thing that I used that was real wood that I had was this little spindle rail and I think the supports for the shelves were made out of hobby wood. Everything else was chipboard because that's all I had. So what do you do? I hope you enjoyed this little project and maybe it gives you some ideas for some upcycling, recycling, reusing something that might normally get thrown away, but might end up looking kind of cool, kind of kind of different. And you can say, hey, I made that. <laughs> the hinges I got on Amazon, I will put those in my Amazon favorites. The glass knob, you can get these at a lot of places, any home improvement store, and they will sell glass knobs or even some craft stores have little cabinet poles. Your mileage may vary on that. And then of course the Waverly chalk paint and the folk art chalk paint in mineral and very vanilla. And I think that's about it. A lot of sandpaper, lots of sandpaper because sandpaper is your friend. Um, oh, primer, I did prime it before I painted it, which is nothing is better than a good prep job if you're gonna be painting something. I'm gonna go check on my pumpkin vines because it snowed, yeah. Yeah, it snowed for the past couple of days. I am a very unhappy camper. I had to pick all my tomatoes that were on the on the tomato vines because they weren't gonna make it. So I picked about 30 pounds of tomatoes. Most of them were green or mostly green, so they'll have to ripen up. I picked the winter squash, the red curry winter squash. Those were basically mature. The vines weren't dried up yet, so technically, I like to leave those that kind of stuff on on the vine until right before the first frost when the first frost comes on a normal time schedule but i went ahead and had to cut those so i covered the things that i could not pick yet which were <laughs> there's a couple watermelons out there if you can believe it they were not ready oh my goodness so i covered those i don't have very high hopes for the watermelon and then i also had to cover my pumpkin vines which are longer than 20 feet long so that was that was wow but the pumpkins were not ready yet so two of them are to the size that they're supposed to be but they hadn't changed color yet and then the other two pumpkins were about mm, three quarters of the way to the size that they're supposed to be so i'm hoping that when i uncover the vines it's supposed to get to 44 degrees today Woo! <laughs> yes it is the beginning of september I hope the vines survived and are healthy enough to at least feed the pumpkins until they are mature and ready to take off the vine. So we'll see. I hope so. It was my first year growing these beautiful pumpkins and I babied them all year. I didn't even get like any powdery mildew on them. Nothing. And then September 7th, 8th, whatever it was, we got a hard freeze for two days in a row. I was like, are you kidding me? Thank you, 2020. Thank you. It's awesome. I really appreciate you, 2020, and all that you have brought to the planet and humankind. We all really appreciate you and wish you would leave now. <laughs> you have overstayed your welcome, 2020. You can just mosey, mosey on. All right, kiddos, I'm going to get back to work. I hope you guys are having a fantabulous day. And I will see you really, really soon in the next video. Bye, guys.